Hey everybody, so today I'm going to be doing a character examination for Melisandre, and so fair warning, spoiler alert for the entire show all the way up through season 8, and then I am going to be re specifically referring to the TV show and not the books just because we have a finished story with the show, and so I can kind of go into like the whole context of her character. Um, and so just to jump right off, Melisandre, I find her to be one of the most interesting characters in Game of Thrones because she presents such moral grayness. Um, I mean, we literally see her commit probably one of the worst acts in the entire show while also saving the day in many regards, um, which makes her a pretty tough character to pin down. Um, and I find that really interesting because the, really her prime motivation is her devotion to her religion. Um, she believes in the Lord of Light. And this is what basically drives everything. And we see her, um, her devotion shaken to an extent um, after the death of Shireen, but for the most part, she stays very true to it throughout the duration of the show, and it leads to some interesting decisions. So instead of giving like a full like biography for her character, I'm kind of just going to go over some specific kind of plot points throughout the series that I feel like were very kind of influential in us understanding who she is a as a character and why she's interesting. Um, so basically, she but but just to start off, a brief background. So she was born, um, she was a slave in Essos, um, and she's basically is centuries old we don't know exactly how long she has a very mysterious origin we know that she used to be a slave in essos she's very very old now and then she came to westeros to kind of enlist with stannis because she believed that he was the prince that was promised as, as she refers to it and so our first kind of glimpse into why melisandre is interesting because we know we see her with stannis and we see that she's like talking to him about the you know the lord of light but we don't know, like, okay, why do, do, does this matter? Why is this different than the Seven? And the reason that we find out that this is different than the Seven is because uh, Maester Cresson, one of um, Stannis' maesters, um, he tries to basically poison Melisandre, and he offers her a cup with poison in it. And she just kind of takes a cup. She's like, all right, let's drink it. And so, like, you know, he basically kind of, like, he really doesn't like what Melisandre is doing. He's very devout to the Seven. Um and so he agrees to drink the cup with Melisandre in hopes that it will kill her. Um, and she drinks it, he drinks it, he dies, she doesn't. And so we see very early on that, okay, we don't know exactly what she can do, but we do know that she is magic. Like, to an extent, we know that she has abilities. Um, and that makes her much more interesting. We're like, okay, what are what is the extent of this? And then the next kind of big moment we see from her is when she um, gives birth to the smoke monster, whatever you want to call it, um, that kills Renly. This is huge because this is the first time we see her... I mean, it's the second time we really see her use magic, and it's the first time that we see it be actually really influential because by killing Renly, I mean, that solidified Stannis' army in a way where he could now actually potentially take King's Landing. And this, this is huge, and we see... We see this manifestation of, okay, Melisandre's abilities, whatever they are, whatever this Lord of Light is, we know that this means something. We, we know that this can do real tangible things. This isn't like, oh, just like a party trick where I like, oh, I can drink poison. She can actually have real impacts on the world. And we see a lot of people don't trust her. Davos specifically does not like her. He is super true to the Seven. He is very, a very firm believer. I personally don't know how he is so true to the seven when he literally sees that melisandre is kind of right at least to an extent he sees that she is correct that like there's obviously some sort of otherworldly magic at work so i find that i'll do a whole other video about how why, why i believe that like i mean all the different religions of westeros it really seems like the lord of light has, has a lot going for him like as as far as like he seems to be the true religion the seven really never do anything tangible i guess the old gods they could also compete um there, there's definitely something going on there but i mean it, it just seems so weird to me that so many people can see that melisandre is very clearly magic and then still not trust her um i guess it's that they believe that she's like a witch and she's not she uses blood magic what they refer to but that that's beside the point so we see that she can do some real stuff but this also kind of opens up to one of the things that people have complained as like being like a plot hole in the show is like okay why don't they just use the smoke monster all the time why don't they like do that and the biggest reason for this is that while melisandre definitely really believes in the lord of light and she is super confident in it especially at this point in her you know early in the show she's super confident 
she doesn't know like the full extent of what it can do and we see this highlighted really clearly when she um goes to get gendry um from the brotherhood without banners and she finds out that beric dondarrion has been he has been resurrected many times um by thoros of mir and she goes that you you shouldn't be able to do this like she doesn't understand that that's possible she didn't know that her religion could do that and so this just really highlights that like even she who knows that the lord of light can do like these like i hate to use the word miracles but can, but can do acts godly acts even she didn't realize that resurrection was possible and obviously this is kind of foreshadowing for later in the show but we we see with this that she doesn't really fully understand the extent of her magic um and that really is kind of interesting and and i feel like that kind of explains away like the plot hole of like oh why don't they just use the smoke monster all the time it's like she she doesn't know exactly what she can do she just believes if i have this like faith in god that is what i need to do um and so next we see what I, in my opinion what is a really interesting part of the show is we see so melisandre takes gendry and she performs this like ceremony where she uses the leeches and you know gets gendry's blood because he has king's blood um and they throw stannis throws these leeches onto the fire and he says the names rob stark joffrey baratheon balon greyjoy the three other kings that he feels are as like usurpers um and then throughout the show we see all three of those characters die now we also see very clear reasons for why they die i mean balon greyjoy he was killed by euron um joffrey was poisoned by Littlefinger and olena and Rob Stark was killed at the Red Wedding. So, like, we see these, like, in-world reasons for why they died. But it's like, did the Lord of Light have a hand in that? Like, was... was it, it just seems awful coincidental that all three of these characters died. Particularly Balon's. I mean, Euron was, had been gone for years. And the fact that he came seemingly out of nowhere is a little interesting and i do think gives a little credence to the fact that that ceremony may have had a huge impact on and we don't know to what extent like what what is the lord of light pushing and pulling these characters motivations we don't know but it's that ambiguity that is so interesting and melisandre really highlights that um so then you know big flash forward um we have the the stannis is up at the wall he decides to march on the boltons who have taken winterfell and things aren't going good a lot of stannis's reserves have been burned away by like a secret attack by ramsey and stannis is desperate um and melisandre thinks that by burning shireen stannis's daughter by burning her alive that that will give a, a, that sacrifice to her god she believes that that will give stannis what he needs to win um and Stannis agrees, and you have probably one of the most difficult to watch scenes in the entire show when they burn Shireen, and it's heartbreaking, and it's so sad, and it's it makes you hate Melisandre because you're like, she she's I mean she's happy while it's happening, she is happy, and then you're just like she's like a monster, she's like a horrible person for like wanting to burn this little girl alive and like she the reason that she does it is because she believes that that is what her god wants it's like she doesn't really view herself as being a decision maker she just views herself as trying to carry out god's will and in that instance that is what she thought that god wanted in her mind um and then you see this really <laughs> it doesn't work it stan is is easily defeated by ramsey um and so then we melisandre is very shaken up by this she dips right out of there and heads up to castle black um and she basically is incredibly stoic and you can see that she's very shaken up and now obviously she doesn't lose total faith in her religion i mean i don't really see how she could i mean the the, the act that she's even alive is a testament to the fact that there are some powers to whatever the lord of light whatever that is they're a testament just because the the necklace that she wears is what is what is keeping her alive she's centuries old um and that's revealed to us after um shireen is burned um and so we we do know that there's like it's it's like a reminder that like she is right to an extent i mean she does this this lord of light is a thing but she doesn't she isn't always right in her interpretations of what needs to be done and this plays out in a huge tragedy in the death of shireen and just it's such a terrible moment and you you you're as a viewer you are furious with melisandre because of this then flash forward 
Jon Snow betrayed by the rest of the Night's Watchmen. He's killed. Davos says we should go to Melisandre. He has seen her work miracles before. He's like, let's see if she can resurrect him. Boom, she does. She does resurrect Jon Snow. And now, if you're me, who loves Jon Snow, Jon Snow is one of my favorite characters. Um, I know this very, very cliche, but I, I love Jon Snow. Um, now, all of a sudden, I have Melisandre to thank for bringing back my fa- one of my favorite characters. And, like, I'm still mad at her for burning Shireen, but it's like, what 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 it makes her morally great it makes her very great and there are some of you that would say burning shireen that makes her bad just through and through um i think that she becomes more gray just because it wasn't like that she just wanted to do it it's just that's what she thought was the right thing to do um which is like the definition of moral grayness um and so she you know, brings Jon snow back to life and then we really don't see her work in any other miracles um until um, well, I guess the other another pivotal moment for her is when Davos finds out that she burned Shireen. He tells Jon Snow. Jon Snow's pretty furious. He says, you gotta better get the heck out of here. If you come back, I'll behead you myself, I believe is what he says. He might say it in different terms. But basically, you're, 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 you're done. The, the, the fact that I don't chop off your head right now is your reward. I, even though you brought me back to life, that's just, you know, goes to show just how much Jon Snow cares about these things. Um, so Melisandre leaves, and then we see her, kind of her reintroduction to the show is when Daenerys comes to Westeros, and we see her go to Danny, and say that she believes that she doesn't necessarily know who, the, the whole prince who was promised this, like, prophecy of that person who's gonna end, like, the coming night, it's a little shaky to her, she's obviously, she is now acknowledging that she doesn't know exactly what's going on, but she does know that stuff is coming, um, uh, and she thinks that Daenerys is gonna play a part um and then you know so we have Jon Snow come unites with Daenerys not really because of her I mean they, Jon, they, Jon Snow doesn't even know she's there um and so but then we see right before the Battle of Winterfell Melisandre shows up and she lights all the Dothraki swords on fire this really does nothing um, <laughs> other than provide an interesting visual seeing all the Dothraki swords be put out later um but then she does that she lights one of the trenches on fire later in the battle. Um, it's a little dramatic, but really also ultimately doesn't do much. Um, but then her biggest kind of last power play is basically reminding Arya of what she had told her way back in season four, that she will shut green eyes, blue or brown eyes, green eyes, and then also blue eyes, implying white walkers, they have blue eyes. Um, a little, in, in my opinion, a little bit of a silly way to say it. Um, and then she gives, you know, the, the the cooler line to Arya where she goes, you know, what do we say to the god of death? And, you know, all that's and done. This gives Arya the motivation to go kill the Night King. Obviously, there's some ambiguity to, like, okay, is Arya the prince who was promised? Um, this is never confirmed. And I kind of like that this is never confirmed because it's like that's... The, the, the Lord of Light is ambiguous. That is the thing with game of the religions in game of thrones is they are very ambiguous we don't fully understand them um and i feel like this is kind of a play on religion in real life is there are people who like feel that there are miracles that happen there like religion is very real to some people in some people's eyes religion is as real they have felt miracles in their life there are other people who think that it is complete made up believe there are people who have different religions some people believe that their their religion is exactly right other people that believe that theirs is both of them believe that miracles have happened in their life it's just there's a lot of ambiguity in religion and i feel like the show does a really good job of showing that and melisandre is the perfect example of that we have this kind of embodiment of moral grayness i feel like she's a really interesting character that gets overlooked all the time i feel like nobody really talks about her as one of the more compelling characters and she doesn't you know she actually plays a pretty big role in a lot of scenes as i just went over um, but I, I, I really enjoy her character arc, and I, I find her to be fascinating in, in a variety of ways. Um, and anyway, yeah, I, I just really hope you guys kind of enjoyed this examination, going through some of her pivotal moments. Um, if you guys have any recommendations for like other characters you want to see me kind of do little deep dives into, please leave a comment down below. If you, if, if you guys would like to see me like talk about characters um within the book context or the show context you know let me know i i tend i want to do most of these for the show just because you have full character arcs um but if people want to hear me talk about the books I, I can definitely do that too um and then yeah if you guys like disagreed with anything i said in this video um please leave a comment down below but if you enjoyed the video make sure to like and subscribe and have a great day